Okay, of course we ask that brothers uncover their heads, and we ask that sisters cover their heads, and we all know it. You know this prayer? You got it? Our Father, uh, our Father, who art in heaven, who art in heaven, holy be thy name, holy, holy be thy, thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, thy will be done, on earth, on earth, earth as it is in heaven, as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, give, give us this day our daily bread, and give us our debts, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors, as we forgive our debtors, and lead us not into temptation, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil, but deliver us from evil, for thine is the kingdom, for thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the power, and the glory, and the glory, forever, forever, praise God, praise God. For he is good. For he is good. And his mercy endures forever. And, and his, his mercy endures forever. forever. These things I pray in Jesus' name. These things we pray in Jesus' name. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The King of Kings. King of Kings. King of Kings. Lord of Lords. Lord of Lords. Lord Lord. Amen. Amen. Today's reading is Psalms 47, verses 1 through 5. Praise ye the Lord. Praise, praise ye the Lord. Lord. For it is good to sing praises unto our God. For it is good, good to sing praises, praises unto our God. God. For it is pleasant. For, for it is pleasant. pleasant. And praise is comely. And praise is comely. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. The Lord doth build up Jerusalem. He gathered together the outcast of Israel. He gathered together the outcast of Israel. He healed the broken in heart. He healed the broken in heart. And bindeth up their wounds. And bindeth up their wounds. He telleth the number of the stars. He telleth the number of the stars. He calls them all by their name. He calls them all by their name. Great is our Lord. Great is our Lord. And of great power. And of great power. His understanding is infinite. His understanding is infinite. Today's reading was Psalms 147, verses 1 through 5. May the Lord give a blessing to the hearing, to the reading, understanding of His Word, in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Amen. That was Psalm 147, you said? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Man, I like that verse. Yeah. Yeah. I didn't know the word infinite was in the Bible. Yeah. His understanding is infinite. Yeah, I like that. You got to highlight it, but I have to remember that. First off, I'd like to say grace, peace, and mercy from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Peace, peace to everybody that was able to make it here safely to class today. We know um, we're here to honor the Lord's Sabbath day and remember this day. And um, hopefully all y'all had a good week and good enough for y'all to make it to class, obviously, right? Because uh, I know me, when it comes to rest, I look forward to the Lord's rest every week. Amen. 
we're going to get right in the lesson. I guess I'm so used to us having somebody uh, do a little something, something in terms of songs <laughs> and, and, uh, and rapping and, and such that we're going to go right into the lesson. Yeah, no, no, he could, mama. I already gave him, I gave him the day off. Um, we're going to go right into the lesson. The title of today's lesson is The Lord Gives Wisdom. The Lord, He Gives Wisdom, brothers and sisters. That's the title of the lesson. It's a real basic lesson, brothers and sisters. I hope I'm going to use some good examples that are just point blank. Because I guess the point I wanted to make in the lesson is, um, like he read the scripture about God. It said that his, what was so infinite? His understanding. His, understanding. his, under, his wisdom and his understanding is so infinite. We know infinite means like you can't number it, right? You can't count or you can't measure how much understanding and wisdom God is. It, it, the same goes for God's power, brothers and sisters. God can do some things. We're going to see in this. When you really look at, I mean, I can't make, when we read Deuteronomy 32, I believe it is, or is it, it's going to be Numbers 11. I can't make that story out to be other than what I'm reading there. And we're going to, you'll see what I mean when we get there. So we're just going to go ahead and jump in. We're going to start at 1 Kings chapter 3. 1 Kings chapter 3. The Lord gives wisdom, brothers and sisters. Sisters, the last time I was here, we, I, when I put my lessons together, I try and build from some point where I was at last time. Try and draw for that somehow. We was dealing with the fact that, you know, we're living in a time where, you know, they um turning up the heat on us, you could say, so to, so to speak, right? right. The uh, powers that be in this world, right? And understanding that they... Um, They've got an agenda, and they want us to go along with it regardless. Well, part of the reasoning for doing this lesson is, we, well, if we're going to go against the grain, right, like a lot of us do just in our normal lives, right, just in terms of keeping the Sabbath, right, just in terms of what we eat, that's against the grain when, when it comes to our family. You know, I got people that still tease me, you know. Well, they don't tease me. They'll throw a joke out there every now and then about, you know, um, I asked somebody the other day, you know, what they got. Did they have some chicken on the grill? And it's like, yeah, there's some pork on here, too. And they did it just to see my, my reaction. They was like, you see his face? That's what they told me when, you know. And I didn't even know I made a face, but I probably did, you know what I mean? Probably was going to say something back to them, but they beat me to the punch. But um, the point is, we live contrary or we go against the grain a lot of times just serving God and keeping his commandments. So the question is, how are we going to move going forward, brothers and sisters? If we got all, if the odds are against us, we got to have wisdom, brothers and sisters. And a lot of times we've been wired to think that we just get it from the amount of time we spend in this book. And don't get me wrong, you're going to have to spend some time in the Bible. Okay. It's very important right. because you, what, what you'll find without me getting too long-winded, what you'll find is, of course, the book gives us a directive on how to live, right? But when it comes to Wisdom, brothers and sisters, the Lord gives it. He, you, you, we're not going to read in the Bible where it says, well, if you do this, that, and or when I say this and that, if you study me six hours a day, you'll be the wisest man there is. Or if you, um, give, me, give me something. If you finish the book. Yeah, yeah, if you can read this Bible 20 times, you're guaranteed to know everything there is in this world and about it. Don't it doesn't work like that, brothers mm -hmm. and sisters? So that's kind of like the where I'm coming from in doing this lesson. So we're gonna get into First Kings. We're gonna look at an example right here. It's not gonna give us too much background. We're gonna kind of like question some things. First Kings chapter three. We're gonna read about Solomon, right? Solomon was supposed to have been the wisest man. I think the last time I was here too, Reggie might have asked me about this scripture. Didn't you ask me about this before? Maybe, watch, we're going to see. Somebody here asked about this. I don't know what it was about, but it was related to Solomon. It might have been Sister Debbie, it might have been. I don't know. But anyway, 1 Kings chapter 3. Yeah, somebody asked about this. 1 Kings chapter 3. We're going to pick it up at verse 5. We're going to read about Solomon. When you get there, go ahead. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night. And God said... Ask what I shall give thee. Okay, read a little louder, brother. In Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, 
Ask what I shall give thee. Okay, so in Gibeon, the Lord appeared to Solomon in a dream by night, and God said, Ask what I shall give thee. Go ahead. And Solomon said, Thou hast shewed unto thy servant David, my father, great mercy, according as he walked before thee in truth, and in righteousness, and in uprightness of heart with thee. And thou hast kept for him this great kindness, that thou hast given him a son to sit on his throne as it is this day. Mm -hmm. And now, O Lord my God, Thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father, and I am but a little child. I know not how to go out or come in. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people, that cannot be numbered nor counted for multitude. Come on. Give therefore thy servant an understanding heart to judge thy people, that I may discern between good and bad. For who is able to judge this thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. And God said unto him, Because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself long life, neither hast asked riches for thyself, nor hast asked the life of thine enemies, but hast asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like thee before thee, neither after thee shall any arise like unto thee. And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked, both riches and honor, so that there shall be, so that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments, as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. And Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream, and he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings, and offered peace offerings, and made a feast to all his servants. Okay, so we read everything that I've outlined, verses 5 through 15, brothers and sisters. First off the bat, what are we looking at here? Solomon had a what, it says? A dream. A dream, brothers and sisters. Could you imagine having a dream like this? Mm -hmm. Verse 5, it says, In the dream, God asked him, What should I give you, Solomon? And then Solomon, in the dream, says... You have showed my father mercy, it says, right? I've seen how you blessed him, pretty much is what he says there. And then he says, I really don't know, you know, what to really, really what to ask is what he says there. He says in verse 7, he says, um, and I, I'm but a little child, he says. I know not how to go. This is a grown man talking here, right? I know, I know not how to go out or come in. And he says in verse 8, Thy servant is in the midst of your people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered. This is what he asks him in verse 9, right? This is what we get into. The Lord gives wisdom. He asked the Lord, Give me an understanding heart to judge your people that I may what? Discern between good and bad. Between good and bad. That I know what the difference between good and evil is, uh, good and bad. Because, brothers and sisters, that's really the main thing when it comes to wisdom, brothers and sisters. It's knowing if something is from the Lord or not, or if it's not. That's going to that's gonna, that's gonna get us real far in these last days with right. so much um, confusion, interference. And I'm not even, I'm talking about in the world, you know what I mean? Let alone what can arise amongst ourselves from us um, exposing ourselves to so much during the week on a daily basis. We look at a lot of stuff, right? Yeah. You know, we look at a lot of stuff that's not real. Can we be honest with ourselves? Yep. Do we look at a lot of stuff that's not real? Yep. Well, maybe everybody does, but doesn't. But, you know, I know I know in my household, my family looks at stuff that's not real. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. All day long, on television, video games. So, my point being with that is, with all that exposure that we have, we have to have discernment between what is good and what is bad. And then um, it says in verse 10, he says, the speech please God. That's the one thing we need to remember out of this, right? Mm -hmm. In verse 10, the Lord, it says, the speech please the Lord that Solomon had asked this thing. That's, and, and, and I, can, I can only bet, right? right, right. I can only, I mean, I mean you know, I, he could have asked, in this dream, Solomon could have asked, Solomon could have dreamt anything, right? Mm -hmm. One thing, I, a point that just came to mind that I did want to mention, how many of us have had dreams 
And I know in my dreams, it's times where I'm, I'm not going to say I'm fully conscious, but I can. I am aware enough to realize that I'm making decisions and saying things in my dream. Mm -hmm. right. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. So this is not like a dream that he dreamt this and, well, I guess we, I don't really want to speak for Solomon, but it looks like in, in this dream, he understanding what he's doing in this dream, mm -hmm. what the dream is about. Mm -hmm. And that can be too deep because a lot of times for me, I don't remember what my dream is until I wake up, right? Because right. obviously when you sleep, you can't tell somebody you know, when I was in the dream, I knew what was going on. We ain't read that here, right? Mm -hmm. But after the fact, Solomon is saying, I had this dream. When I was in the dream, God asked me this. I told him, this is what I want, right? In the dream, brothers and sisters. And then it said, read verse 11. And God said unto him, because thou hast asked this thing, and hast not asked for thyself you, long life. Yeah, you didn't ask to live for a long time, right? Like most people, like you've seen movies or cartoons, they rub a genie, right? And you yeah. get three wishes, right? And they'll, you know, one of the wishes be, you know, they, somebody might say I, that I live forever, right? Hey, what up, sis? Solomon didn't ask to live forever, did he? He didn't ask for long life. Neither has what? Neither has asked riches for thyself. Uh-uh. You didn't ask to be rich. Go ahead. Nor has asked the life of thine enemy. Uh-uh. You didn't want me to kill nobody that you wouldn't, that you was having issues with. Go ahead. But has asked for thyself understanding to discern judgment. To do what? To discern judgment. To discern judgment, brothers and sisters. That's what Solomon asked the Lord. To have discernment of what? Judgment, brothers and sisters. How to make the right decision. That's all this, that's all this means. Verse 12, we're going to finish it out. Behold, I have done according to thy words. Lo, I have given thee a wise and understanding heart. So God answered him in a dream and told him he was going to do this for him. And then it played out in real life, brothers and sisters. We all know according to the Bible that Solomon is the wisest man that ever lived according to the Bible. That's what it says. That there was none before him as wise as him, nor after him. There has not been a man as wise as Solomon. And according to this, God answered him in a dream. And then the Lord had to manifest that in real life. You get what I'm saying? It couldn't just be a dream, right? right. How many of our dreams come true? You have dreams that come true all the time, Art? Mm -hmm. I'm just asking, you know, not putting you on the spot. <laughs> Joe, you had some dreams that come true? Exactly, right? Like, most of us, our dreams are, we look at it like, man, I don't know what I was dreaming that for, right? And then sometimes we have some dreams, you're like, man, that might have been from the Lord, right? We try and interpret them ourselves and do all kinds of stuff. But my point is, this man had a dream, and then now God's got to manifest the dream. It ain't a dream like we think. Most of us, in our minds, dreams are what? Not real, right? Come on now. So his dream, this was not a fantasy or a dream, and this wasn't a dream in that sense. This was like a, basically like a, a foretelling the truth or foretelling something that was going to happen in Solomon's life. Uh, verse 12, I'm going to read it again. It says, Behold, I have done, this is God talking to Solomon, Behold, I have done according to thy words, lo, I have given you a wise and understanding heart, so that there was none like you before, neither after should there be anybody else. And on top of that, verse 13, what did he do for, this, do for this brother? What did God do for this brother? And I have also given thee that which thou hast not asked. Come on now. Both riches and honors, so mm. that there shall not be any among the kings like unto thee all thy days. I mean, this is a great package deal right here. <laughs> yeah. he, could have, he didn't ask for none of this, and God said, I'm going to give it to you anyway, just mm -hmm. because you asked to be over my people and to be able to judge and discern between good and bad, right? Verse 14, what did he say? And if thou wilt walk in my ways to keep my statutes and my commandments as thy father David did walk, then I will lengthen thy days. And, and, Sol could go on, yeah. and Solomon awoke, and behold, it was a dream. And he came to Jerusalem and stood before the ark of the covenant of the Lord and offered up burnt offerings and offered peace offerings and made a feast to all his servants. So Solomon had to believe his dream was going to come true, right? He knew it was from God. He got up and offered, like, his, man, God about to bless your boy. That's pretty much what we read here, right? We don't look at it like that all the time, but hey, I'm trying to bring it out as much as possible. Deuteron Deuteronomy 32. Deuteronomy 32. Let's look at the reality of the situation when it comes to us as 
as a God's creation, mankind in general. Because, you know, even though we look at it, we're going to read this and it's, you know, the context in which it is written, you know, it can look like I'm singling out, you know, particular people. But in reality, this is the way it is for everybody. But we're going to, I'm going to point out that it's, it is specifically talking about the people right here. Deuteronomy 32, pick it up at verse 1. When you get there, my brother, go ahead. Give ear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. Uh, this is Moses, the song of Moses, right? My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill the, the, as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and as the show, showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, ascribe ye greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect, for all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity, just and right is he. They have corrupted themselves. Their spot is not the spot of his children. They are a perverse and crooked generation. Do ye thus requite the Lord, O foolish people and unwise? Is not he thy father that hath brought, bought thee? Hath he not made thee and established thee? Remember the days of old. Consider, consider the years of many generations. Ask thy father, and he will shew thee. Thy elders, and they will tell thee. When the Most High divided the nation, to the nations their inheritance, when he separated the sons of Adam, he set the bounds of the people according to the number of the children of Israel. Verse 9. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. Okay, so verse 9 says, The Lord's portion is his people, the children of Israel. That's what we read here, right? Mm -hmm. But what did we read? Do, 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 does, even though we can read that, what we just read, that God's portion is his people, right? That's what it said. For the Lord's portion is his people. Jacob is the lot of his inheritance. That sounds all fine and dandy, right? But what did God say about this people in verse 6? Do ye thus requite the Lord, O uh, foolish people? O what? And, o foolish people and unwise? It's right there. That's the question God asked his people. Do you requite the Lord, O foolish people and what? Unwise. So he's admitting, God's saying, hey, these are my people, but they what? Unwise. They unwise, brothers and sisters. Keep going. Skip down to verse 28. For they are a nation void of counsel. Neither is there any understanding in them. Oh, that they were wise that they understood this, that they would consider their latter end. Verse 28, just so we clear about this people. For they are a nation void of counsel, neither is there any understanding in them. They don't got no understanding? God talking about this people that belong to him, they have no understanding, brothers and sisters. That's what God is saying. And we just read before that, it called them, they was foolish, right? Mm -hmm. Unwise, it said, a foolish people. Think about that. You know what I mean? Really think about God talking about his own people in that manner, brothers and sisters. But at the same time saying, this is my inheritance. This is my people right here. These people right here that's foolish, unwise, they ain't got no understanding. And then verse 29, oh, that they were what? That they were wise. That they understood this, that they would consider the latter end. Okay, so God's desire is that we be wise, right? Especially his people, right? Because he had a plan for his people. They're supposed to be the light to the rest of the people, brothers and sisters. And we got other scriptures, you know, that support that. Let's go to Numbers 11. Let's go to Numbers 11. Because I just wanted to establish that fact. Because when I say in general, I mean, do you think that other nations of people other than God's people are... Uh... Hold on, hold on. I put my foot in my mouth. <laughs> Because the deck is stacked against us so much, right? Because, <laughs> you know, I grew up, I remember when I was in high school, they had some Nigerians that went there, right? And then they used to say, them Africans is smart. That's what black people used to say about other black people that they knew wasn't, you know, the same black people, right? Them Nigerians is smart, you know what I mean? And then what do they say about Asians, right? Right? You went to UCLA, right? Yeah. That's why I said I didn't want to just put it out there because the deck, deck is stacked against us, right? Meaning uh, is the children of Israel, when it comes to education and just starting right there, we're, we're behind the eight ball behind everybody else. 
you know, it's a reason why there's only, I don't even know, when you went to UCLA, what was the percentage of blacks at UCLA? 4%. How much? 4%. 4% out of 100, right? And the Asians are probably making up 60, 70 easily, right? Yep. And the perception when people look at around, they'll, you can say like, huh, like, you know, then people are smart, right? Because they're into tech and uh, they get a lot of jobs in fields that consider, I guess, smarter, uh, harder, harder fields that take, you know, high levels of mathematics and science and whatever. But they're, so, I, what my statement was going to be was, do you think that people are smarter than them? And the answer is there are people that think that naturally Asians are smarter than other people. Right. Uh, Africans, because a lot of them go into the medical field and become doctors and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But the reality is, do you think the Lord is looking at them like they so wise and they so understanding and they not foolish? No. Because obviously, if he meant for his people to be the ones to be a light to them, to show them how it is that God wants them to be and how he wants them to live, and if we're not doing that job, then they remain still what? With no understanding, and they would still be unwise, regardless of how much they attain in worldly knowledge, right? right. We'll come back to that maybe. Numbers 11. Numbers 11. We're going to focus on Israel. Numbers 11. Numbers 11. Let's look at Numbers chapter 11. Because we read, a, we already read that God answered Solomon in a dream and told you, I'm going to give you wisdom. I'm going to give it to you. Not like you got it. You, don't, you can't buy it. That's like what I said, like where I was trying to go with the lesson. We're going to see another instance here where God not playing, brothers and sisters. He can give you wisdom. He can give it to you. But of course, in order to give something, you got to do what? Earn it. Nah. What did, we, what did we read? What did Solomon do? He asked for it. He, he asked for it, brothers and sisters. He asked for, for wisdom. And you got to be genuine. What's up, Brother Don? You got to be genuine in asking for some wisdom. Right? Numbers chapter 11. Numbers chapter 11. You have to be interested in being wise to begin with is the point I'm trying to make, brothers and sisters. If you're not interested in it, do you think God going to give you more wisdom? No, nah, you got to have some kind of interest in You got to have uh, some kind of uh, appetite, some kind of thirst to be more wise. You know what I mean? And it's got to be for the right reasons, right? Yeah. What did Solomon say? So I can judge and have discernment, right? Yeah. I can make right decisions. Yeah. I can know what's what, good and bad. Mm -hmm. It's just simple as that. It ain't no other reason for me to be wise. Real, real talk, right? Mm -hmm. According to the Bible, right? Numbers 11. Let's pick it up. We're going to read all this chapter, too. That's why I say y'all think the lesson is short. Yeah. Numbers chapter 11. I'm going to let him read, though. I'm going to jump in a couple of places. Numbers chapter 11. We're going to pick it up at verse 1. When you get there... Let's see about this foolish people that the, we just read about, the children of Israel. Go ahead. And when the people complained, it displeased the Lord, and the Lord heard it, and his anger was kindled. And the fire of the Lord burned among them, and consumed them that were in the uttermost parts of the camp. So people was complaining, and God was setting them on fire. That's what we're reading here, right? Verse 2. And the people cried unto Moses, and when Moses prayed unto the Lord, the fire was quenched. Mm, ain't that a split, right? Yeah. Just like that. The Lord, the Moses prayed, and then he stopped burning the people, right? We don't understand this, God, because He do. the more God do for you, brothers and sisters, the more he will hurt you if you turn from him. Mm -hmm. That's what basically what it comes down to. The more he do for us, and God has done a lot for us, and a lot of times we don't realize it, right? He got every right to just as much as he bless you and do things for you. He got the right to punish you just like your parents, right? It ain't, I mean, we, 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 we get, we put God out here in some place where he's not uh, practical. When he's very practical, brothers and sisters, that's why he tells us to refer to him as our father. Because that's how he going to deal with you. Mm -hmm. 11. Uh, so the people cried unto Moses and the fire was quenched. Verse 3. And he called the name of the place Tabera. Because the fire of the Lord burned among them. Verse 4. And the mixed multitude that was among them fell and lusty. And the children of Israel also wept again and said, 
who shall give us flesh to eat? Oh, they ain't finished complaining yet. After he burned some people, it says here, the mixed multitude that was among them fell a lusting, and the children of Israel also wept again and said, hey, where are we going to get some meat from out here? Where are we going to get some meat from? Verse, verse 5, we remember the fish which we did eat in Egypt freely, the cucumbers and the melons and the leeks and the onions and the garlic. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all besides this manna before our eyes. <laughs> That's how you read it right there, my brother. Yes, sir. But now our soul is dried away. There is nothing at all beside this manna, huh? Right. They complain like, boy, we tired of this manna. <laughs> we eating this crap every day is pretty much what they say. Every day. Where's the meat, Lord? Right? Go ahead. And the manna was a coriander seed, and the color thereof as the color of Bedelium. Come on. And the people went about and gathered it and ground it in mills or beat it in a mortar and baked it in pans and made cakes of it. And the taste of it was as the taste of fresh oil. And when the dew fell upon the camp in the night, the manna fell upon it. Okay, we're going to start right there. Just to interject here, the people was complaining because when they came out of Egypt, their lives, they didn't have access to food like they did when they was in Egypt. Is that what we read here? We read we just read it and said, man, we had cucumbers, we had melons, mm -hmm. fish, onions. We was, we, we, we was, eating, some, we was eating good, mm -hmm. even though we were slaves, right? right? My point is this, brothers and sisters. They make complaints about God. There's other scriptures I could have put in the lesson, but my point is, brothers and sisters, they didn't never had enough sense to realize if God parted the Red Sea and they walked across water to the other side. If God wanted them to have fish, cucumbers, melons, onions, and garlics and be making nice meals every night, he would have that would have he would have made that plainly clear that that's what they were there for, right? Mm -hmm. But they can never wrap their minds around that. That's why he called them foolish. Mm -hmm. That's why he said they had no understanding. Because they couldn't put two and two together. If, if, if you only feed well, Joseph, go on, huh? If you only feed Joseph and your daughter, y'all only eat beans and rice. Chicken and uh, Green tortillas. Tortillas. Uh, <laughs> if y'all eat that every night, and there's no other meal that y'all have, there's got to be a reason why, don't it? Mm -hmm. It could be a lot of reasons why. It could be, you know, it's all we can afford. Mm -hmm. It could be, this is all you gonna get. Mm -hmm. It could be some different reasons, right? My point is this. At some point in time, the children of Israel had to ask themselves, well, dang, he got us out here. We're picking up this manna every day. I know he know we're tired of it, right? Maybe what we going to do? What, what, what we going to do to get some meat? Do you think somebody must have said, we going to go complain to Moses? I don't know what happened. But it got to a point where they was really out of pocket with God, according to what we're reading here, right? Yeah. yeah. It said that they was initially complaining in verse 1, right? Mm -hmm. We didn't even read what the complaint was. It just says when the people complained, it displeased, displeased the Lord and he was burning them. Then it says they started complaining some more because they didn't have no meat and didn't eat like they used to when they was in Egypt. So they complaining some more. Verse 10. What does it say here in verse 10? Then Moses heard the people weep throughout their families, every man in the door of his tent, and the anger of the Lord was kindled greatly. Moses also was displeased. Moses also was displeased. So God knew that everybody is mad at him. Do y'all with me, right? Yeah, really. He knows that everybody is mad at him because he done let them out of Egypt. He done brought them out here and he ain't giving them no food. That's, that's what the God, God, he's very aware of this, right? Keep yeah. reading. Go ahead. It said Moses was mad too, right? Go ahead. Where we at? Verse 11? Verse 11. Go ahead. Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I found, not found favor in thy sight? That, that thou layest the burden of all this people upon me. One more time. Read 11 so we understand what's going on. And Moses said unto the Lord, Wherefore hast thou afflicted thy servant? And wherefore have I not found favor in thy sight? That thou layest the burden of all this people upon me. Why you put all this drama on me, Lord? Got me out here with all these Negroes. And they hungry and they ain't complaining every day. That's what he's telling them right here. Keep going, verse 12. Have I conceived all this people? Have I begotten them? That thou shouldest say unto me, carry them in thy bosom. I mean, Moses laid it on thick, right? Mm -hmm. Like, am I their daddy? I'm their mama? 
I'm supposed to be responsible for what they eat every day. Keep going. Go ahead. Carry them in thy bosom. As a nursing father beareth the sucking child unto the land which thou sweareth unto their father. Verse 13. When should I have flesh to give unto all this people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. Okay, so here it is. We're back to the crux of the matter. Moses saying, Where do you expect me to get a bunch of meat at to feed, feed all these people, Lord? How am I supposed to do that? Show you Moses even getting caught up, right? Moses might have missed a couple of hot plates that he had down in Egypt, right? <laughs> oh, I don't know, but he definitely saying, Lord, I mean, I'm not saying Lord's complaining, but he's basically definitely saying, like, well, I don't know where no meat, where we gonna get no meat from. Ain't no meat on the table at this point, right? Read it again one more time. When should I have flesh to give unto all this people? For they weep unto me, saying, Give us flesh that we may eat. Give us some meat. Verse 14. I am not able to bear all this people alone, because it is too heavy for me. And if thou deal thus with me, kill me, I pray thee, out of hand. If I have found favor in thy sight, and let me not see my wretchedness. I mean, Moses is laying it on thick, brothers and sisters. Yeah. This is a crossroad moment right here. I'm not able to bear all these people. He's ready to throw in the towel. I'm tired. Every day they complaining, 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 complaining. Six hundred and some thousand people, they say, brothers and sisters. They complaining. I'm over a half a million people complaining. Because it is too heavy for me. If you deal with me, he said, if thou, he basically said, if you're going to keep on dealing with me, well, you might as well kill my butt. Because I'm tired. Yeah. That's what he's saying. If I have found favor in thy sight, well, don't let me see that type of wretchedness, he say right here, right? Verse 16, come on. And the Lord said unto Moses, Gather unto me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom thou knowest to be the elders of the people, and, officer, and officers over them. And bring them unto the tabernacle of the congregation, that they may stand there with thee. Verse 17. And I will come down and talk with thee there, and I will take of the spirit which is upon thee, and will put it upon them. And they shall bear the burden of the people with thee, that thou bearest not thyself alone. Okay, so the Lord got a remedy for Moses, right? Go get you 70 people, right? Because remember, the title of the lesson is, The Lord Giveth Wisdom. I know we kind of got off track wondering about how it's wild Israel was like we really think we would have did any different if we go out here right now for some months and you ain't got your Chick-fil-A and you ain't got your McDonald's and you ain't got your barbecue pit out there with you and your carne asada and your putting <laughs> some beef ribs on there and some chicken and let's see how y'all act here. It ain't gonna take long, believe me. But we like to make these people out to be like they so, man, they had God right in front of them. How could they have done that? Yeah, okay. When that backbone start getting close to that belly button, <laughs> people start acting funny, brothers and sisters. Believe me, I, I done seen it. So it says here, uh, where was we at? Verse what? 18. 18. So we read 16, 17. God said, go get 70 people. And then I'm going to take the spirit that's on you, right? And then I'm going to put it on them, brothers and sisters. This is that scripture I was telling you about. I can't make this to be out no more than what it is. Right. You see, do you understand what I'm saying? Yeah. This ain't no, uh, there is no, there was no requirement for this. Right. Well, I'm going to get ahead of myself. I'm going to read 17 again. It says, I'm going to come down, I'm going to talk with you, and I'm going to take the spirit that's on you, and then I'm going to put it on them, and they shall help you, right? That's what it says when he said, bear the bird. You ain't going to have to do it by yourself no more. I'm going to take the spirit on you, I'm going to put it on them, 18. And say that thou unto the people, sanctify yourselves against tomorrow. And ye shall eat flesh. For ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, Who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. Therefore the Lord will give you flesh, and ye shall eat. I mean, really, the Lord is about to put a hurting on these people, <laughs> brothers and sisters. When the children of Israel, Reggie, was in Egypt, what did they do to the Lord? What did they do? What did they do to make God come? They cried to the Lord. Thank you. They cried to him, right? I know I asked Reggie, but y'all asked him. Oh. <laughs> I just try to keep Reggie in the mix. <laughs> they cried unto him. And what was they crying about? How horrible it was there, right? right, right. How terrible it was there. That's right. Now they talking about how well it was there. Isn't that what we read here? Yeah. Yeah. Read 18 again. <laughs> and say thou unto the people, Sanctify yourselves against tomorrow, and ye shall eat flesh. For ye have wept in the ears of the Lord, saying, who shall give us flesh to eat? For it was well with us in Egypt. 
Therefore, the Lord will give you flesh and ye shall eat. So the Lord said, I'm going to give you what you want since you're talking about it was all good in Egypt just a couple months ago or just <laughs> last year. It was all, it was all right down there. Y'all didn't have no problem being down there. <laughs> Keep going. You shall not what? He say right here. Ye shall not eat one day, nor two days, nor five days, neither ten days, nor twenty days. But even a whole month until it comes out of your nostrils. Until what come out your nostrils? Until it comes out of your nostrils. Until what? He talking about that meat he gonna give them. He gonna give them some flesh, huh? Because that's what they complaining about. Mm -hmm. That's what the problem is. That's why they mad at God, huh? Because he don't give them, want to give them what they want to eat, correct? Right. Keep going. He gonna give them some meat. Go ahead. And it be loathsome unto you, because that ye have despised the Lord which is among you, and have wept before him, saying, why came we forth out of Egypt? Why we came forth out of Egypt? Go ahead. Why, why you brought us out here, Lord? What's the real reason? Verse 21. And Moses said, The people among you who I am are 600,000 footmen, and thou hast said, I will give them flesh, that they may eat a whole month. You see what Moses talking about here? Moses second-guessing God. It's over half a million people out here, and you say you're going to give them enough meat to feed them 10 days, 20 days, a month? I mean that's a lot of that's a lot of that's a lot of meat. That's some pounds, huh? Mm -hmm. <laughs> that's some stuff. I mean that's more meat that's in that's in the whole two or three Costco's. Wouldn't you say? <laughs> Keep going. It says and Moses said the people, or uh, he said it's six hundred thousand of us. I will. He says, uh, and thou had you. He's saying you done, God. You done said I will give them flesh that they may eat a whole month. Mm -hmm. Then he says what in twenty two. Shall the flocks and the herds be slain for them to suffer, suffice them? And is this how I'm going to meet the quota? I'm going to kill all the animals, right? Mm -hmm. That you know that they got, they cattle and stuff? Keep going. Or shall all the fish of the sea be gathered together for them to suffice them? You see, Moses is really getting out of pocket here, right? We're going to see how out of pocket he's getting. But God understand Moses' frustration, brothers and sisters. Because God, Moses is, you know, this is, a lot of bad, this is not a good situation he's in with these people. Mm -hmm you know, pressuring him every day. Verse 23. And the Lord said unto Moses, Is the Lord's hand waxed short? That thou see now whether my word shall come to pass unto thee I or mean, not? I mean, he really just told him straight up, boys, you crazy? You really question me after what I done did for y'all? You think I can't feed y'all out here? Keep going. And Moses went out and told the people the words of the Lord and gathered the 70 men of the elders of the people and sent them round about the tabernacle. And the Lord came down in the cloud and spake unto him and took up the spirit that was upon him and gave it unto the seventy elders. And it came to pass that when the spirit rested upon them, they prophesied and did not cease. So they witnessed this take place, brothers and sisters. God come down in the cloud, he says. He what? He says he spoke unto them out of the cloud, right? A lot of us probably ain't familiar with that. That's how God used to talk to his people. He would come down in the cloud. They wouldn't see him. But they hear that voice come out that cloud. And it says here that he told them straight up in their face. And it came to pass that he took of the spirit that was on Moses and he gave it to the 70 elders. Then they started what? They started prophesying, right? right. They started talking about God, right? right? Speaking some wise words, right? That's what we read in here. Right. Verse 26. But there remained two of the men in the camp. The names, the one was Aldad and the name of the other Medad, and the Spirit rested upon them, and they were of them that were written, but went not out unto the tabernacle, and they prophesied in the camp. So two of the seventy weren't there. Right. These other two gentlemen were somewhere else, but at the time when it, the Spirit was taken off of Moses, and God put it on them as well, right. these other two got that Spirit right. as well, we read here, right? That's Even right. though they weren't with the seventy, right? right? Go ahead. And there ran a young man, and told Moses and said, Eldad and Medad do prophesy in the camp. Uh -huh. And what Joshua said? And Joshua, the son of Nun, the servant of Moses, one of his young men, answered and said, My Lord Moses, forbid them. So you see what Joshua told Moses? Man, man, t t tell him they ain't supposed to be doing that. <laughs> what Moses say though? And Moses said unto him, Envieth thou for my sake? Are you worried about me being jealous because they prophesying and they being wise and they telling people about God? You worried about me? Go ahead. Would God that all the people, would God that all the Lord's people were prophets, and that the Lord would put His Spirit upon them? He said, Moses said, "Sure, I, I, I want to see it on all of them if it was up to me, right? right. That would be the bomb, right? right? right. Would to God it says there, right, that all the Lord's people were what 
prophets, it says there, right? And that the Lord will put what? His spirit on all of them, right? Keep going. And Moses got him into the camp, he and the elders of Israel. And there went forth the wind from the Lord, and both and, and brought quail from the sea, and let them fall by the camp, as it were a day's journey on this side, and as it were a day's journey on the other side, round about the camp, and as it were two cubits high upon the face of the earth. Come on. And the people stood up all day, all that day, and all that night, Come on. and all the next day. And what they do? And they gathered the quail. They gather these birds, huh? God done rained a bunch of birds on them, right? <laughs> Keep going. He gathered the least gathered ten homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about. The oh, they're showing everybody. Everybody showing them. Well, you see how many uh, quails I got? Right. We talking about 40, 50. I mean, they could, they, it, it wasn't no limit, was it? Right. Many, peace, brother, how you doing? As many as they could gather, right? As many as they could gather, and, and however many they could get. That's what we're reading here, right? It says, they was gathering quails all that day, all that night. Remember, these are people that are starving for some meat, right? We read, right? Right. They, they real, 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 real want to have a chicken, fry some chicken, and, and want to bake some chicken, and want to grill some chicken, and right. grill some bird, and they ain't had no meat in a long time, right? And been complaining to God about not having no meat. That's right. That was the complaint, right? You ain't, we ain't got no meat, Lord. We out here eating this, this manna every day, right? But we ain't got no meat. So God said, I'm going to give you more meat than you can handle, right? Read it again, verse 32. And the people stood up all that day, and all that night, and all the next day, and they gathered the quails. He that gathered least gathered ten homers, and they spread them all abroad for themselves round about the camp. We in Numbers chapter 11, my brother. Thank you. Yes, sir. Numbers chapter 11, and we write at verse 32, 33. The title is, The Lord Gives Wisdom. We just read about how God, this is just like a sidebar here. Probably didn't even need these scriptures after his. Probably just 29 would have been good, right? We could have stopped right there. But we just, I just wanted to keep reading it so we can read and understand that God fed all these people. And it, it, he, and he, it ain't nothing for him to do it. Cause remember, I kind of mentioned about his power. It's what? It's infinite too. Not just God understanding. His power is infinite. He want to make it happen? He can make it happen whenever he want to make it happen. Right? And he fed six, over, probably had to be close to a million people. Right. If it's just talking about the men, it was 600,000. Right. You know, usually it's more women, more, men, more women and children than men. Would you agree? Yeah. You know, we can't read the exact number, but we know it's a lot of people. And he done, they done gathered these birds, these quails. That's how much was on the ground, brothers and sisters. That's how many quails was on the ground that they could just go out there and get. But what happened in verse 33? It really ain't got nothing to do with what we're talking about, but just to show you how upset God was. Remember, he said, I'm going to give you so much quail until it come out your nose, it said, right? right. And we're we going to read something else he did to him because we didn't know he was going to do this. Verse 33. While the flesh was yet between their teeth. While they had the bird in their teeth, huh? What God do? <laughs> Air it was chewed. When, before they even finished chewing it, what happened? The wrath of the Lord was kindled against his, the people. And the Lord smote the people with a very great plague. I'm telling you, these people didn't have no sense, brothers and sisters. <laughs> if God telling you, you mad, he mad at you. Well, I'm not going to even go there. I ain't going to even go there. I was just going to put something in to make us think again, you know. Got to have some good sense, brothers and sisters. If God, if, if, if God telling you how he going to punish you, are you going to still go through and, and do it? I mean, if, he, if, he, if he's telling you, look here, y'all complaining about it not being enough meat. I'm going to give you so much meat that it's going to come out your nose. And then you're going to go out there and get that and eat, and eat it just like he's telling you. That was him telling you, like, y'all need to cool out. That's what he was telling y'all. Y'all really besides yourself asking for all this meat. I'm going to give it to you, and now I'm going to see how you're going to act when I give you all this meat. And they sure enough did exactly what he said they was going to do because that's what they were lusting after. They should have been out there lusting after God, brothers and sisters. Wanting to be him, wanting to be his people, wanting to have that spirit on them. But they weren't concerned about that. They never could figure it out that that's why God brought them out of Egypt was to make them a holy people. And we can read that verbatim in the scripture that says that. So anyway, we went here. The point was, I'm just going to reiterate. It said God took the spirit off of Moses and put it on 70 people. That's, that's how God did it. 
He don't need he you did they have to read the scriptures? No. Did, did they have to read this book night and day before they got understanding? Before they had God's spirit in them. Before they started prophesying. You see, you understand what I'm saying? I understand exactly. See the Lord, he the Lord, he boy. That's what I, I you know, a lot of brothers and sisters, they'll be like, uh, you know, I don't have no desire to be a teacher. I don't have a desire to read up here and things like that. How are you going to tell God what it is he want to do with you? <laughs> but a lot of times that's what we do, right? We just want to, you know. I mean, it ain't nothing wrong with it just, you know, just being on easy street and just, you know, um, you know I'm going to fear God, do his commandments, stay in my lane. I get it. You know what I'm saying? But the Lord is about what? He about you loving him with everything. And if you got talents and gifts he done gave you, he not expecting you to what? Sit on them, brothers and sisters. But hey, that's another lesson. I didn't mean to get off in there. My point I want to make there is you, you can't be speaking about what you want to do when it comes to God. Right. When he didn't gave you this truth. He ain't gave it to you for you to not to use it for the glory of him. Let's go further. Let's go to number 16. Finish up 34? Oh yeah, no, no, you ain't gotta finish that. We good. Okay. Yeah, that ain't no good. <laughs> Yeah, I, 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 as a matter of fact, let me see your pencil. When I do this lesson again, I'm going to stop at 29. Oh, what was that? Yeah, 29. 29. Okay, we're going to number 16. We're going to read another instance. Number 16. Number 16, we're going we're gonna to read the exact opposite here. We're going to read the exact opposite where you can do too much. You get what I'm saying? That's why I said it's cool to stay in your lane. Now we're going to read with somebody doing too much. Too much. Number 16, go ahead, verse 1. Now Korah, the son of Ishar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Ibram, the son of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, the son of Reuben, took men. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, famous in the congregation, men of renown. Oh, they went and got the G's, right? <laughs> and they ran up on Moses, right? <laughs> Let's see what they're talking about, brother, verse 3. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, every one of them. And the Lord is among them. Wherefore then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. So they basically telling Moses, like, you're not trying to, like, share none of this action with nobody. Mm -hmm. You just want to rule over us. I think we're going to read this. going to say you want to be a prince over us. Mm -hmm. We just read that Moses said, would to God that all his people was prophets, right? Mm -hmm. So we reading here that they had already off the bat here, they got an agenda, right? Mm -hmm. And their agenda is, is that Moses think he the man, and can't nobody else do what he doing, right? Read three again. They gathered themselves together. I read it. They gathered themselves <laughs> together against Moses, against his brother, and said unto him, you take too much upon yourself, seeing all the congregation. We are holy, bro. Every one of them. And the Lord is among all of us. That's what they telling them. We are holy. We already know they foolish and unwise, we read, right? <laughs> but they talking real body about being God's people, huh? <laughs> Wherefore, why you lift yourself above all of us? Go ahead. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. And he spake unto Korah and unto all his company, saying, Even tomorrow the Lord will shew who are his. The Lord going to do what? Shew who are his. Tomorrow I'm going to show you who is his, right? We're going to see who God's is, go, who, who God people is. Go ahead. And who is holy. And who is holy. And will cause him to come near unto him. Oh, we're going to see who, who, who God won't up by him and next to him and doing things for him. Go ahead. Even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. Come on. This do, take you censers, Korah, and all his company, and put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. Ye take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. Now who can give me an description of what a censer is? Because he basically, uh, we know what an incense is, right? So I guess this was just something you put the incense in, right? Is that what a censer is? So, yeah. You know, so he said, go get your censer, put the incense on it, right? Put fire on it, 
and put incense in them that the man whom the Lord doth choose, he shall be holy. And then Moses said, boy, y'all asking, y'all take too much upon y'all selves. You said, I'm doing too much. I'm taking too much on. Mm -hmm. Watch, we're going to see who taking too much on because you're doing way too much right now. Verse 8. And Moses said unto Korah, Here, I pray you, ye sons of Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel has separated you from the congregation of Israel to bring you near to himself, to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord and to stand before the congregation to minister unto them? So Moses asked him a question here, right? He said, Y'all looking at the Lord already done gave y'all a job already. And is it a small thing? That's what he says. Does it seem too small? Yeah. He talking to Korah in there, right? Yeah. The 250, right? right? He says, seem but a small thing unto you that the God of Israel, he done already separated you from everybody else. He says to bring you near to himself. You do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord. You stand before the congregation to minister unto them. That ain't enough, verse 10. And he had brought thee near to him. And all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee. And seek ye to be the priesthood also? You want the priesthood too. You want it all though, huh? When God done already gave that to your other brothers already. Right. Why is y'all tripping is what he's telling them, right? That ain't that ain't that didn't belong to y'all, but y'all want that too, huh? You want that? You want to have that uh notoriety, huh? You want to be seen amongst men as being priests, and you know, you want to be the top dogs. You tired of seeing me and my brother up here is basically what it could, Moses is trying to tell them, right? Because that's what they told them, right? Or that's what they said about Moses. You want to be in the, on, on, in the front, right? On, on front street in front of everybody. Why, you want to lift yourself up and be over us. Moses is saying, hey, that's already reserved for somebody else in verse 10. He said, and he had brought thee near to him, you and your brothers, and do you seek the priesthood also? Because that's what it came, that's what it's ultimately coming down to. They basically tell him, Moses, you need to move about the way so we can run this. Right. Go ahead. For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. And what is Aaron that ye murmur against him? What, what, what you talking about Aaron for? Go ahead. And Moses sent to call Dathan and Ibarim, the sons of Eliab, which said, We will not come up. Oh, the one, some people didn't, didn't come up. They had a little sense, but go ahead. It is a small thing that thou hast brought up brought us up out of a land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a prince over us. You see how these ones is talking when they went and hollered at them? Mm -hmm. They said, these, these ones that didn't come up, it says, is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of the land of Egypt? That's what they talking about, the land that floweth with milk and honey. You brought us out here to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself altogether a what? Prince over us. You see how messed up in the head they done got? I don't know if not eating that meat got them delirious or what, <laughs> brothers and sisters. They seen God split the Red Sea, brothers and sisters, and walked over the dry land. But, I mean, did, Mo did Moses do that by himself? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. They know Moses, but they done got so caught up out here in this wilderness that they done let their mind get the best of them, right? That's what we're reading here, right? Mm. That they accusing Moses of having a plan to bring his own people out of Egypt, and then he gonna sit back and become be king over all them, or prince, as it says here. This is what they say, Moses. This was his agenda. This is what they accusing Moses of having an agenda, right? Verse fourteen. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey, or given us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Uh -uh, you ain't did nothing, none of that what you was talking about, because you know that is what God told him, right? Mm -hmm. And they tell him, Moses, hey, we've been out here, and ain't none of that done jumped off yet. Go ahead. Will thou put out the eyes of these men? We will not come up. And Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, respect, respect not their offering. Respect not thou their offering. I have not taken one ass from them, neither have, have I hurt one of them. I ain't put hands on them, I ain't took nothing from them, and they talking about they scared to come up because they thinking I'm going to put their eyes out, right? Because they know it's a big, big, it's a big deal going on. This is a serious issue going on. Go ahead. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou in all thy company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow. You see how Moses moving? Like, uh, yeah, I can say whatever y'all want. <laughs> I want to see you tomorrow, though, bro. We're we going we gonna to see what it do tomorrow, right? Go ahead. And take every man his censer and put incense in them. And bring ye before the Lord every man his censer. 
two hundred and fifty censers, thou also, and Aaron, each of you, his censer. And they took every man his censer, and put fire in them, and laid incense thereon, and stood in the door of the tabernacle of the congregation with Moses and Aaron. And Korah gathered all the congregation against them unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto all the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses, and said unto Aaron, Separate yourselves from among this congregation, that I may consume them in a moment. Moses said, we're going to find out tomorrow, right? It's going down, verse 22. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the Lord of the spirits of all flesh, shall one man sin, and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? They tried to get a pardon for these brothers, because they know they was already besides themselves, and Moses still trying to get some mercy for them after they done accused them of all these things. Verse 23. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak unto the congregation, saying, Get up, get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram. You better get back, huh? Uh -huh. You best to get back. Verse 25. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram, and the elders of the Israel, and the elders of Israel followed him. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray thee, for the tents of these wicked men, and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sin. He said, If you don't get back, you gonna you gonna get some of this, what I'm gonna do. Verse 27. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram on every side, and Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives and their sons and their little children. Come on. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these works, for I have not done them of mine own mind. I ain't got nothing to do with this. Keep going. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, then the Lord hath not sent me. But if the Lord makes a new thing, and the earth open her mouth, and swallow them up with all that pertain unto them, and they go down quick into the pit, then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. That's right. You're going to know that he was hot at them, that I didn't have nothing to do with it. Verse 31. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking. Time he finished talking. I didn't mean to cut you off. Mm -hmm. And it came to pass, as he had made an end of speaking, all these words that what? That the ground clave asunder that was under them. And the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up. And their houses, and all the men that appertaineth unto Korah and their goods. Come on. They, all that pertained to them, that, uh, went down alive into the pit. Everything they had. And the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. And all Israel that were round about them fled at the cry of them. For they said, Lest the earth swallow us up also. And there came out of a fire from the Lord, and consumed the two hundred and fifty men that offered incense. Oh, he wasn't finished, huh? Nope. After he swallowed them up, then he made some fire come down on them 250 that they had came up there with. When he went in, like I said, he went to go get the, the his squad or with the, the, the elders, the, yeah. the, the, the ones yes. that, that was supposed to be somebody's, huh? Right. He said, I've got something for them too, right? Let's get down to verse 41, though. We almost out of this chapter. Go ahead. But on the morrow, all the congregation of the children of Israel murmured against Moses and against Aaron. Not saying, again, not again. Again? again. They complaining again? again? They still trying to figure out a way to blame Moses for this, brothers and sisters. Keep going. Saying, ye have killed the people of the Lord. <laughs> it came to pass when the congregation was gathered against Moses and Aaron and against Aaron that they looked toward the tabernacle of the congregation. And behold, a cloud covered it, and the glory of the Lord appeared. And Moses and Aaron came before the tabernacle of the congregation. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Get you up from among this congregation, that I may consume them as in a moment. And they fell upon their faces. And Moses said unto Aaron, Take a censer, and put fire therein from off the altar, and put on incense, and go quickly, quickly unto the congregation, and make an atonement for them. For there is wrath gone out from the Lord. The plague is begun. And Aaron took as Moses commanded, and ran into the midst of the congregation, and behold, the plague has, was begun among the people. And he put on incense, and made an atonement for the people. And he stood between the dead and the living, 
and the plague was stayed. Verse 49. And they that died in the plague were 14,700 beside them that died about the matter of Korah. So this thing started with Korah, Korah and Dathan and Abiram and 250 people, right? They got dealt with, right? And because these people was upset at what happened to them, right? They end up suffering the same consequences as them. Instead of what? Minding their own goddamn what? Business. That's right, brothers and sisters. How foolish could they have been? Remember the title of the lesson, the Lord giving wisdom, huh? He trying to give it to them. I mean, he trying to get some sense into them. I mean, real life sense, right? You just didn't seen the Lord wipe out, open the ground up and swallow some people up. And for complaining against Moses, and then you're going to go out there and do the same thing. Like I said, brothers and sisters, we better understand that the Lord ain't playing with us once we start having some understanding because he expects you to operate accordingly. It ain't no other way of putting it. Let's go to the next place, Ecclesiastes 7. Come on. Let's start moving faster. Now, I think that was the last one I had in there like that. Ecclesiastes 7, yeah. Oh, we got one more at the end. Just, just some good stuff to read. Ecclesiastes 7. Mm -hmm. So we got an idea of what it looked like to have no wisdom. Do we have an idea of what that looks like? To not have no sense, just to be out there, huh? <laughs> I like that, because that's what they was, out there in that wilderness, huh? See, the Lord stripped them down, brothers and sisters, with no internet, with no TV. You understand what I'm saying? <laughs> with no magic mountain. What no 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 school? Bless you, pull it. <laughs> what nothing? Well, they couldn't uh, they couldn't make no excuse to have nothing influencing them, no distractions or nothing like that. Okay. But hey, like I said, it's a lot of understanding to get in these scriptures, brothers and sisters. When we dig deeper in it, and really see what God is, is is trying to do with us. Ecclesiastes chapter seven. We're gonna pick it up at verse one. Is that it? We're going to read it anyway. I guess that's it. Yeah. Yeah, this is uh, the Lord giveth wisdom. He's trying to give us some wisdom here. This is back to Solomon. Let's see what he was talking about once he got that wisdom. Ecclesiastes 7, verse 1. Go ahead. Good name is better than precious ointment, and the day of death than the day of one's birth. Mm. It is better to go to the house of mourning than to go to the house of feasting. For that is the end of all men, and the living will lay it to heart to his heart. I mean, and that's just bottom, that's just common sense, huh? Because we probably don't know what the house of feasting is. It's better, it's just basically saying that hey, it's better to go to a funeral than to go to a feast. Right? And everybody probably be like, what that mean? It is better to go to the house of mourning, that's talking about when somebody died, than to go to the house of feasting where everybody having a good time. For that is the end of all men. And the living gonna do what? When you go to a funeral, you're gonna lay it to heart. Like, dang, huh? Hey, yeah, we lost this brother gone, huh? You're gonna start thinking about what God wants you to always be thinking about. Mm -hmm. That you only got a limited amount of time to get right with this guy. And that, that's all that mean when he said the living will lay it to heart when they go to the house of mourning. Right. They're gonna lay it to heart what, what happened. When you had a party, you ain't thinking about nobody dying, is you? Unless you in the hood and they been a, they done, <laughs> you, you know, little house parties, I don't know they even do that no more. They still shoot house parties up. <laughs> Probably somewhere in Chicago, right? I know back in my day, boy, you and LA was something else back in them days, boy. <laughs> so many innocent people, that really ain't funny, right? But so you, you wanna go to them house of feasting. But outside of that, though, most of the time you ain't thinking about nobody dying when you go into a party and having a good time, right? right. right. <laughs> Except right. Israel. Right. We the only ones got to worry about at the, when we're partying. Got to be looking over our shoulders the whole time while we're dancing. But that's another lesson, right? Uh, <laughs> so we read, uh, okay, verse three. verse 3. So here it is. It's going to explain it. What? Sorry is so, sorrow is better than laughter. Sorrow is better than laughter. Come on. For by the sadness of the countenance, the heart is made better. See, when you sad, it say that make you better. A lot of us we don't. We live in a world where don't nobody never want to be sad, huh? They don't want to be depressed. <laughs> Give me some Prozac, right? <laughs> Give me some drugs, so I just be 
<laughs> I don't know, you know what I mean? I don't even know. I got some family members, good love, boy. <laughs> I mean, I get it. Things in life can take you to a dark place, right, brothers and sisters? We know some people that have been through some stuff. But I mean, yeah. I don't even know. I can't even speak on it, brothers and sisters. I guess I got to be blessed that I don't need no meds for me to operate on a regular basis. You know what I mean? But we've seen here, sorrow supposed to help you out when you're sad, right? It says sadness, the heart is made better, right? Mm -hmm. Keep going. The heart of the wise is in the house of mourning, mm -hmm. but the heart of fools is in the house of mirth. That's that house party I'm talking about. Keep going. It is better to hear the rebuke of the wise than for a man to hear the songs of fools. Mm -hmm. Song of fools. That's what Jews talking about, huh? Yeah. That's that. <laughs> we start listening to a few of them beats. That's what it turned into, huh? Yeah. A song of fools, huh? We sitting there singing all the words to it, huh? Let's uh, skip down to verse 10. Say not thou, what is the cause that the former days were better than these? Mm. For thou dost not acquire wisely concerning this. Like that, ain't that what Israel was doing? Mm -hmm. Say not thou, what is the cause that the former days was better than these? Mm. For thou has not, it says, for thou dost not require, inquire wisely concerning this. You don't know what you're talking about. Verse 11. Wisdom is good with an inheritance. And by it there is profit to them that see the sun. Come on. For wisdom is a defense, and money is a defense. But that excellency of knowledge is that wisdom giveth life to them that have it. Come on. It consider the work of God, for who can make the, that straight, which he hath made crooked? Uh -huh. Nobody. Verse 16. Be not righteous over much, neither make thyself over wise. Oh, you can be over wise, huh? God give you some wisdom and you want more than that. I mean, that leave, I mean, sometimes we get some understanding and that ain't good enough, right? Go ahead, read it again. That be verse 14, please, or whatever verse, 16, verse uh, 16. 16, yeah. Be not righteous over much. Don't be over-righteous, right? Playing Sabbath police all the time, right? Mm -hmm. Be not righteous over much, neither what? Neither make thyself over wise. Uh -huh. Why shouldest thou destroy thyself? Why you should what? Destroy thyself. That's what Solomon telling you. Why are you going to destroy your own self being over-righteous, right? Mm -hmm. And being over-wise. Can't nobody tell you nothing. You know it all. Ain't that what over-wise is? Mm -hmm. Or don't you think that would be the attitude of somebody that's over-wise? Mm -hmm. They know better, huh? Mm -hmm. Keep going. Be not over-much wicked, neither be thou foolish. Why shouldest thou die before thy time? We know what that's talking about, boy. You, you, you act wild enough. You can meet your maker sooner than you think. Keep going. What verse we at? 18? 18. Uh -huh. It is good that thou shouldest take hold of this. Mm -hmm. Yea, also from this withdraw not thine hand, for he that feareth God shall come forth of them, of them all. And let me just correct myself. You can meet that dirt a lot faster because <laughs> you ain't going to meet your maker. Mm -hmm. But yeah, everybody knows that usually is a figure of speech that, hey, you keep messing with God and keep being out here doing too much. You, you, you'll face him sooner than you think because, uh, but really the reality is you'll face that dirt, that ground. You'll face death sooner than you think. But go ahead, verse, wherever we was at, 18, 18. again. 18 again? Yeah. It is good that thou shouldest take hold of this. Come on. Yea, also from this withdraw not thine hand. Don't turn it loose, come on. For he that feared God shall come forth of them all. Wisdom strengthens the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. One more time, 19. Wisdom strengthens the men the wise more than ten mighty men which are in the city. I mean, think about that, brothers and sisters. It's saying wisdom is more mighty than ten strong men, right? Mm -hmm. ten, ten, ten bodybuilders, huh? Your wisdom can, you know, be you got more strength than ten men, right? That's what it's pretty much saying. The figure is peace, right? 23 and 24, is that what we hear? That's what we hear. Go ahead. All this have I proved by wisdom. Uh -huh. I said, I will be wise, but it was far from me. Mm -hmm. That which is afar off, and exceeding deep, who can find it? That's a good question, right? That boy Solomon talking about getting deep, and he was the wisest man on earth. Mm -hmm. Right, he said, all this I have proved by wisdom. I said, I will be wise. Mm -hmm. That's what he told God, right? Give me the wisdom, right? But he said, it was far from me even still. Because mm -hmm. the most high wisdom is on some other level type stuff. Mm -hmm. Once he start letting you see some things, and you get some little bit more understanding. But he's got enough sense to realize, he said, that which is far off, 
and exceeding deep, the real deep stuff, who can find that out? No, I don't know who can find that out. <laughs> it, ain't, it ain't meant for you to know everything, right? Come on, let's go further. Let's go to Psalms 13. One thirty-one. Thank you. One thirty-one. And this, I'll be honest with you, this is kind of like a scripture where I did the lesson, brothers and sisters. I mean, a few of us know everything, a few things that's going on right now within the class and stuff like that. So um, this scripture can apply on so many different levels. That's why I like it. Psalm 131, we're going to read 1 through 3. Psalm 131, 1 through 3. Go ahead, my brother. Lord, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. Neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. Come on. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself as a child that is weaned of his mother. My soul is even as a weaned child. Let Israel hope in the Lord from henceforth and forever. Okay, so verse 1 is what I want to hear and verse 2 as well. 3, that's some good stuff. I hope we're going to hope in the Lord forevermore. But verse 1 says, my heart is not haughty. What that mean? I'm not real prideful of saying here, right? Mm -hmm. Haughty, that's what haughty means. What's another definition for haughty? Conceited? Mm -hmm. Stuck up? Mm -hmm. my, uh, proud. 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 He said, so, so David is saying, my heart is not haughty, nor my eyes lofty. I don't think I'm better than everybody else. Neither do I what though? What David say? Neither do I exercise myself in great matters or in things too high for me. So you got to be able to recognize, brothers and sisters, yes. when something is just, if, it's okay if you don't get it or you don't understand something. You know what I mean? But some people, you know, that's all they want to be strived for is to, you know, come up with something that maybe they, basically, I guess, they just want to just know more, right? and want to be seen as being somebody that got some wisdom that nobody else got, or know something that nobody else got, right? That's what it's saying here, right? David's saying, I don't concern myself with something that's too high, brothers and sisters. And like I said, that applies on a lot of different levels. It ain't got to just be this book. It could be just being in somebody else's business. Mm -hmm. some, some, sometimes when you're a kid and you see your parents uh, getting into it, or you see something that just ain't none of your business, right? That could be too high for you to even be dealing with it. Am I right or wrong? All right. You ain't got to just be a little kid. You know what I mean? I'd have heard some conversations. My dad, like I told y'all, he almost 80 before he got ill. You know, I see him having some conversations on the phone. I'm like, I don't know. <laughs> I'm, that's still some grown, other grown, on another level type of grown stuff he's talking about there. You know what I mean? Even though I'm grown now. That conversation he had with whoever's on that other end of that phone, that's too high for me. I'm not going to even worry, wonder about why he talking to him like that. It sounds like it's some deep stuff going on there. So like I said, it ain't just got to be the book, brothers and sisters. It's a lot of things that could be too high for us to get ourselves caught up in. So it's best just to do, do what? Verse 2. Are we acting like this? And I know we're not because the Lord is telling us this in the New Testament. Left and right, when Jesus walked the earth, he told us to do this right here. Verse 2. Surely I have behaved and quieted myself. You done quieted yourself? You, don't, you ain't saying nothing? You ain't got nothing to say? That's what David's saying. I, I, I just shut up. Go ahead. As a child that is weaned of his mother, my soul is even weaned, is even as a weaned child. I'm just a little old baby. I ain't got, I ain't, I ain't got nothing to say. Huh? Let Israel hope in the Lord from henceforth and forever. Let's go to Hebrews 5. Hebrews 5. See that the Bible is telling us the same thing coming back. Hebrews chapter 5. Most of the time things end up working themselves out. Working themselves out. Without us having no involvement in even though we can, uh, we got something to say about it. Or we got some spill, or what's the, what's the, what's the, what's the what I'm talking about? What's some opinion or something? Yeah, yeah, then you with me, uh, two, uh, want to put my two cents in about mm -hmm. it, man. A lot of times, you just leave it alone, don't say nothing. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, to the point where you're really getting caught up in the, in the, in the situation. Mm -hmm. 
You got there ain't nothing wrong with having an opinion, but what? Keep it to yourself, right? <laughs> I, 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 I know I was gonna go there, huh? Hebrews 5, go ahead, 12 and 14. I'm taking all day. Hebrews chapter 5, 12 through 14. And when you get there, my brother, go ahead. For we and for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be in the the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. What Paul telling him again? He said, "By now you should be teaching already, right?" That's what he's saying. Mm -hmm. For when, for when, for when, for the time, go ahead. For when, for the time, ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the principles of the oracles of God. He said, "You need a refresher course, huh?" Mm -hmm. Go ahead. And are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. He said, you ain't really ready for no high stuff. You think you is. Keep going. For everyone that uses milk is unskillful in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full that are of full age, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. There we go. We're getting back to wisdom, right? And remember, wisdom is discerning what's good. What's bad, or in this case, it says what's good and evil. Good and evil. Remember, we talked about it. You were saying like sometimes you see people react a certain way, and you're like, man, I know they know better than that. Mm -hmm. But if you ain't been in them situations often, what do you think gonna happen? You might get beside yourself, right? If you ain't never dealt with that situation like that before, or you just might get frustrated. But what is this scripture telling us here then? That the only way you get to a point. Where you ready for strong meat and to deal with certain things. Read it again. But strong meat what? But, but strong meat belongeth to them that are full age. Full age. You got to be done been around for a minute. Go ahead. Even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. They got they what? They senses what? Exercised. They done been there what? Done that brothers and sisters. They done been there done that. And we all have to exercise ourselves. On wisdom, brothers and sisters, and look at that situation. Like, I mean, that's really what it comes down to, how we going to get through this thing in these last days. We're going to look at something. Oh, oh, I, don't, I ain't got nothing to do with that. Or it's going to be like, okay, yeah, that's cool. We can do that. I mean, that's just really what, that's really what life is about. Because they get to the point where, you know, they trying to, like, you know, we, we've already been talking about, they, they want to make you do some things. And it's up to you to figure out if that's a good thing for you in your household, or if it's, no, you need, it ain't going down, right? right? Let's go further. We're almost done. James 1 through 7. James chapter 1, verses 1 through 7. James chapter 1, verse 1 through 7. Because remember, I was talking about exercise, right? You got to deal with situations. You ain't never been in no uh, fight before you probably get whooped on, right? <laughs> or somebody uh, hit you with the. <laughs> Y'all know about the leg sweep? You was gonna say the two piece? Nah, no, I'm talking about fight, <laughs> dirty fights. <laughs> oh, look, bro, no, he probably got a coat. Oh, yeah, you know what I'm saying? I let him tell you. <laughs> he let him tell you. <laughs> yeah, man. They teach you some stuff in the military, don't they, Reggie? Yeah. yeah. Run up on somebody on the street and run up on somebody that really been in the military and put that stuff to use, boy. <laughs> I don't care how short they is, how tall they is, boy, you, you end up with a pumpkin head. I done seen it firsthand. <laughs> Surprise everybody, like, cool, he didn't think he had no hands like that. But the way he did it, you like, yeah, boy, anybody use that move right there. And they ain't even suspecting it. You end up on top of somebody like this. Boy, you gonna win most of the time, am I right or wrong? You straddle him, he laying flat on his back, and you over there. I've seen enough UFC fights right now. You get a man in that position or a woman in that position, you should come away. <laughs> well, you know, things can change, don't get me wrong, but uh, that's a good I'd rather be on top than the bottom. How about that? That's all I'm saying. A good starting point. A good starting point, huh? James chapter 1. How do we get on that? <laughs> <laughs> James chapter 1. Uh, oh, I was talking about exercising, right? Yeah. You got to be in some situations, right? Yeah, right. You got to deal with some things in order to, you know, know how to react when you get in a certain position. Go ahead. Yeah. James chapter 1, verse 1. Go ahead. 
James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes which are scattered abroad, greeting. My brethren, count it all joy when ye fall into diverse temptations. Count it all what? Joy. We don't be looking at it like that, but go ahead. Knowing this, that the trying of your faith worketh patience, but let patience have her perfect work, that ye may be perfect and entire, wanting nothing. If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God, that give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Okay, so if any of you what? Lack wisdom? Mm -hmm. Study your Bible 20 hours a day? Mm -hmm. Is that what it said? Mm -hmm. That ain't what it said, huh? Mm -hmm. Did it say, memorize 47 chapters? No. Mm -hmm. You got to remember all Genesis, the first 10 chapters, you got to be able to say it and not miss a beat, right? right. Read it like, you don't even need to pick up the book, right? right? You just read it off the top of your dome, right? Chapter and verse, any place in the Bible, does that show wisdom? Or is that how you get wisdom, brothers and sisters? Nope. Read it again, how you get wisdom? If any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God. Let him what? Ask of God. Ask the most high. Not like Solomon did. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. That give it to all men liberally, and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Mm -hmm. But let him ask in faith, mm -hmm. nothing wavering. For he that wavereth is like a wave of the sea, driven with the wind and tossed. For let not that man think that he shall receive anything of the Lord. Oh, that's it. For let not that man think he going to receive anything of the Lord if you don't ask in faith, not waver. In other words, you can't just ask God for wisdom just on some humbug type of stuff. You got to really, like I said, be thirsty for it. And when I say thirsty, you mean, you know, you want to you wanna be able to, you know, know how to operate. No, I want to know what you're about, Lord. I want to know, you know, I want to be, uh, as, as, as Solomon said, I want to be able to judge amongst your people, right? Right. Certain situations come up so I can what? Make the right decision if some jump off. Mm -hmm. or, if, or if such and such happen, I can give a word or you know a wise answer or give some counsel to somebody, right? Mm -hmm. That's why we want to be wise, right? That's mm -hmm. why we need to be wanting to have wisdom. Mm -hmm. But the uh, bottom line is, it says he give it to all men liberally, right? Mm -hmm. Liberally meaning like, I give you what I'm going to give you, right? Because we know he ain't going to give it to us like he gave Solomon, is he? He ain't not finna do that, is he? If he done told Solomon, hey, you're gonna be the wisest ever, none before you, none after. That's what he said. Right. So you have to be asking the Lord, give me almost as much wisdom as you gave Solomon. <laughs> <laughs> That's the point I'm making. Right, right. In other words, you can't be on some, I wanna be wiser than Solomon. How many brothers in Hebrews you think done prayed that before? Yeah. <laughs> now I know some, if it's some Hebrews, I'm sure done prayed that. And some Gentiles too. <laughs> I want to be wiser than Solomon, right? right. I want to know, uh, uh, you know, anyway, I'll leave it at that. Right. So it says here, all you got to do is what? Ask, brothers and sisters. Ask. And like I said, I'm not diminishing spending time in this book. I'm not going to diminish that. Because you got to know what it is, but we we reading about how you get wisdom, right? That's what this lesson is on, right? Yeah. And that we ain't deal, really reading about how to be righteous, how to be holy. Even though we know that's part of the ingredients, right? That's part of the recipe. Mm -hmm. But in this sense right here, we studying to understand how to get wisdom, and we just gotta go straight to the source, and we don't even realize that's all it is, that he can just <laughs> I don't know what God do when he do it. Like he said, he took that spirit off of Moses and he put it on them, brothers and sisters. Amen. Whatever it do, he turned you up in here, brothers and sisters. And can't no other, can't no man do it. And, it, and the book ain't going to do it like how God can do it, brothers and sisters. Let's go to Ecclesiastes 1. Oh, no, 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12. 1 Corinthians 12. This, this is just the First Corinthians 12, verse 1. Skip down to verse 4 after that. Verse 1? Uh, verse 4, yeah. After yeah, we read verse 4. Oh, one, one, yeah, we're going to read 1, and then we're going to read verse 4, my brother. We're going to read 1, and then we're going to skip to verse 4. First Corinthians 12, verse 1. Meditate on that for a minute. Go ahead. 
Now concerning spiritual gifts, brethren, I would not have you ignorant. He don't want us to be unaware that God can give us spiritual gifts, right? Verse 4. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. It's the same Spirit, but God got some different gifts, huh? Go ahead. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. It's coming from the same place. Go ahead. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh in all in all. Come on. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. Uh, he wants you to get something out of it. Go ahead. For to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom. One gets that, huh? Go ahead. To another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit. Come on. To another the working of miracles. To another prophecy. To another discerning of spirits. Uh, dis discerning of spirits. To another diverse kinds of tongues. To another the interpretation of tongues. But all these worketh that one and the self same Spirit. Dividing to every man severally as he will. Back to like what it said in James, right? He give it to him liberally, right? God said, hey, I sever this out. I give this person a little piece. I give this. Some people got multiple, uh, got a few of these, right? Okay. It's possible, right? Okay. But, he, he, but what he's saying is, is that, you know, I, min I, I administer them differently as, or to different people, correct? Right. Everybody don't got the same thing. Right. Uh, for one is given, verse 8, the spirit of wisdom, right? Or the word of wisdom, right? The other, the word of knowledge by the same spirit, right? Mm -hmm. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits, right? That's what kind of came up here today before the lesson we was talking, right? You want to try the spirits. That's where wisdom is. You know, man, that look, that look foul to me. I ain't fooling with that. You know what I mean? God will give you that. Do we automatically have it? Do we automatically get it when we get baptized? Mm -hmm. No. We, 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 it says that he will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. But you got to what? You got to develop it and exercise it, brothers and sisters. Mm -hmm. It's there for you to get. The gift is like just sitting there. Like All you got to do is just go get it and unwrap it and work with it, brothers and sisters. And, and, and that is what it says when you get baptized. That He promised that he would what? Give you the gift of the Holy Spirit, which we know is what? Knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. But it's not, it, it ain't going to be instantaneous is what I'm saying. He, gonna, he, he probably do give us some kind of upgrade, though, brothers and sisters. I would like to think that he upgrades us when we get baptized. Because truth be told, before you get in that water, you should already be what? Serving God a little bit or a lot of it, striving to, you know, already, already knowing what time it is for the most part. Right. But that ain't always the case, right? Some people hear the word and, you know what I'm saying, they prick them in their heart. We can read that in the Bible. We don't like to just meet a brother, come in off the street the first time, and then have a baptism the same day, right? But in the Bible, a few times it looked like it went down like that, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying now, because we know that we want people to understand what they're doing before they do it. Because if the Lord ain't... We got too much of that going on tomorrow in traditional churches, right? Mm -hmm. People that, you know, thinking baptism is the end of the line, right? When baptism is supposed to be the start of your walk with God, not the end, not like you didn't achieve something, you know? Like I always, my dad, my, the only question my dad ever asked me, for the most part in the Bible is, do I got to be baptized to go to heaven? Which, of course, you know, he, he, getting even trying to explain to him, ain't nobody going to heaven, and that's one thing. But I understand what he's saying. What he's saying is to be pleased with God. Well, I go to hell if I ain't baptized. Is what he asking me is in a nutshell. You know, and I always say to myself, like, man, like, you know, we put so much uh, weight on that baptism, brothers and sisters. How many people, we can't read about Noah being baptized, huh? We read about Enoch being baptized. Abraham, did they get baptized? <laughs> but we know they're in the kingdom, right? So baptize, baptism can't be the end all, be all. Is what, but that's what we've made it to be. Like that's some kind of free pass to get into God's kingdom because we got in that water. Um, did we finish that? Yeah, we did. Okay, let's go further. Let's go to Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. But God got different spirits and different gifts is what it said there. Concerning spiritual gifts, he don't want us not to be a, a, unaware. But we got to ask him for them, ask him for these, uh, these gifts or these, this wisdom or this knowledge or this, the spirit of knowledge. We got to ask him for it, brothers and sisters. 
First, Ecclesi uh, first Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes, chapter 1. I mean, do it make sense? Mm -hmm. Yep. God can give you something you don't want? Chapter 1, verse 12, yeah. It's Solomon again. Mm -hmm. I, the preacher, was king over Israel and Jerusalem. And I gave my heart to seek and search out by wisdom concerning all things that are done under heaven. He wanted to know it all. Come on. This sore travail hath God given to the sons of man to be exercised therewith. A travail? What do you mean? That seemed like that'd be a good thing, wanting to know everything. Mm -hmm. Not that what Solomon's saying, huh? Mm -hmm. He said, you want to try and figure out if you want to, boy, you're going to be sorely disappointed. Go ahead. I have seen all the works that are done under the sun, and behold, all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Come on. That which is crooked cannot be made straight, and that which is wanting cannot be numbered. I commune with mine own heart, saying, Lo, I am come to great estate, and have gotten more wisdom than all they that have been before me in Jerusalem. Yea, my heart had great experience of wisdom and knowledge, and I gave my heart to know wisdom. And to know madness and folly, I perceive that this also is vexation of the spirit. Now he said, don't think it was easy now. Go ahead. For in much wisdom is much grief. And he that increases knowledge increases sorrow. Okay, let's go further. Let's go right into Ecclesiastes chapter 2. Because like I've always said, I did a couple of lessons. I said, the older you get, the more you, the more you realize that that grave and that dirt nap is coming. <laughs> That's that wisdom you start getting in that knowledge. Like, boy, my time. Wait a minute. Remember when I was 16? Mm. Now I'm, six, I'm now 56. <laughs> Can't be too many more years, right? That, that, that's that grief is talking about right there. You start And you start seeing other things in the road. You be like, man, this is, this is a cold world out here, right? Cold peace. It's a cold <laughs> peace, boy. The more you know, the, sometimes the worse it looks. Ecclesiastes 2, verse 1. Right into that. Let's see he, how much he meant this. Go ahead. I said in mine heart, Go to now. I will, prove thee, I will prove thee with mirth. Therefore, enjoy pleasure. And behold, there is also is vanity. I mean, if you really look at this verse 1, brothers and sisters, it kind of show you why Solomon went and married all them women and stuff. He talking about, I want to know the wisdom of what it's like just to just do it on another level. <laughs> That's what that is saying right here, right? Mm -hmm. I said in my heart, go to now. I'm going to prove what it's like because myrrh in the Bible means having a good time. Mm -hmm. I will prove thee with a great time. Therefore what? Therefore enjoy pleasure. And behold, this also is vanity. Oh, he said, I found out that wasn't the business. Verse 2. I said of laughter, it is mad. And of mirth, what doeth it? Come on. I sought in my heart to give myself unto wine, yet acquainting my heart with wisdom. And to lay hold on folly, till I might see what was that good for the sons of men. I mean, he not playing this. He's like, I'm going to try it out. Go ahead. Which they should do under the heaven all the days of their life. I made me great works. I built me houses. I planted me vineyards. I made me gardens and orchards. And I planted trees in them of all kinds of fruit. I made me pools of water to water therewith the wood that bringeth forth trees. I got me servants and maidens. And had servants born in my house. Also I had great possession of great and small cattle above all that were in Jerusalem before me. I mean, ain't none of us going to know what it's like to experience this, is we? Mm -hmm. But Solomon's saying, since the Lord gave it to me, I wanted to know what it's like. So I went ahead and, and I made sure I got me a piece of it. Go ahead. I gathered me also silver and gold and the peculiar treasure of kings and of the priv uh, provinces. Whatever I want, go ahead. I got me men singers and women singers and the delights of the sons of men as musical instruments and that of all sorts. Had his own band, huh? <laughs> <laughs> Come on now. So I was great and increased more than all that were before me in Jerusalem. Also my wisdom remained with me. And whatsoever mine eyes desired, I kept not from them. I withheld not my heart from any joy, for my heart rejoiced in all my labor. 
and this was my portion of all my labor. Come on. Then I looked on all the works that my hands had wrought, and on the labor that I had labored to do. And behold, all was vanity, a vexation of spirit. And there was no profit under the sun. You gotta be kidding me. That sounds like some. Ain't nothing wrong with that. This brother's saying, boy, at the end of the day, I realized it wasn't nothing. He's gonna tell us why, verse 12. And I turned myself to behold wisdom and madness and folly. For what can the man that do that, for what can the man do that cometh after the king? Even that which hath been already done. He only can do what I did. Come on. Then I saw the wisdom exceeded, excelleth folly. As far as light excelleth darkness. 13 again, ain't no doubt about that. For I what? I saw that wisdom what? Then I saw that wisdom excelleth folly. As far as light excelleth darkness. Come on. The wise man's eyes are in his head. But the foolish walketh in darkness. And I perceived also that one event happened to them all. Come on. Then said I in my heart, as it happened to the fool, so it happened even to me. And why was I then more wise? Question, why was I more wise? Go ahead. Then I said in my heart that there is all, that this also is vanity. He said this is some bull too, verse 16. <laughs> for there is no remembrance of the wise more than one of, of the fool forever, seeing that which now is in the days to come shall all be forgotten. And how died the wise man as a fool, come as on. the fool. Therefore I hated life, because the work that is wrought under the sun is grievous unto me. For all is vanity and vexation of spirit. Yea, I hated all my labor which I had taken under the sun, because I should leave it unto the man that shall be after me. Now we getting some understanding. He like realized, like, man, I got all this stuff. I gotta get. I'm, when I'm gone, somebody else gonna get it. What else? And who knoweth whether he shall be a wise man or a fool? He might trick it off. <laughs> Everything that I work hard to accomplish my whole life. Go ahead. Yet shall he have rule over my labor, wherein I have labored, and wherein I have shewed myself wise under the sun. This is also vanity. Come on. Therefore I went about to cause my heart to despair of all the labor which I took under the sun. For this is a man whose labor is in wisdom, and in knowledge, and in equity. Yet to a man that hath not labored therein shall he leave it for his portion. This also is vanity, and a great evil. For what man, for what hath man of all his labor, and of the vexation of his heart, wherein he hath labored under the sun? For all his days are sorrows, and his travail grief. Yea, his heart taketh not rest in the night. This is also vanity. There is nothing better for a man that he should eat and drink, and that he should make his soul enjoy good in his labor. That's right. This also I saw, that it was from the hand of God. For who can eat? Or who can, or who else can hasten here unto more than I? For God gave it to a man that is good in his sight, wisdom and knowledge and joy. But to the sinner he giveth travail, to gather into heat, that he may give to him that is good before God. This also is vanity, the vexation of the spirit. Let's go to the last place. So Solomon made sure he re reiterated there in twenty six. God giveth to man what. That is good in his sight. Wisdom. The most high giving, brothers and sisters. Don't ever forget it, y'all. I the best. You know, I have brothers that ask, you know, not that, you know, you are who you are, right? And brothers are going to ask you a question. They're going to ask you. Sisters might ask any one of y'all a question at one time. They know I've been in the Word for a while. And they ask me, well, well brother, how you, you know, you do this, you do that. What did it take? And I tell them, well, I asked the most high, brother. Like, you know, that's who I got, that's who I got at. Because I knew I was, you know. I don't, I don't meet Elijah, I don't think, if I never make that prayer. You get what I'm saying? I'm talking about way. I'm talking about before I was in the truth. I got to a point where I was like, man, I don't know. I, I know you're trying to, you didn't open my eyes and, you know, I'm acknowledging you, but, like, I ain't understanding this real, real well, you know what I mean? And then I'm learning a few things and I find out that that's bogus and I really don't got nobody to guide me, you know what I mean? So, the Lord, you know, you ask him to give you some wisdom and to help you out. He remembered in prayers. You might not remember it. But if you got enough sense, as time go on, you'll be like, yeah, I did remember I got on my knees and cried and asked the Lord for that. You heard what I said, it cried. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Not no, just no regular prayer. And I'm not saying that's how y'all got to do it to get wisdom. I'm just, what I'm saying is, you got when you pray to the Most High for something you really want him to give you, 
you gonna ask for it just like you would your own mom, your daddy, your granny, your auntie. If you really want it, you gonna ask them and you gonna come correct and do it the right way. Let's go to the last place, Ecclesiastes 9, and we're gonna read 13 through 18. Last place, Ecclesiastes 9. I just said that to say, whatever little wisdom I got, I know where I got it from. I can't say I just got it just from, just, I mean, I ain't gonna lie, I done studied this Bible till my eyes were swollen, homie, bloodshot red. Mom come in the room like, you still read that book? <laughs> yeah, like that. So I told you, I ain't gonna tell you that that ain't, good, that ain't no good thing to be doing neither. But at the end of the day, I hit some walls back in the day. That's probably why I was in it. Like, I can't figure it out by myself. You know what I mean? But point is, you know, you gotta. I need to, uh, the little wisdom I got. I know I got it from him. I know what I asked him for. Uh, Ecclesiastes nine verse thirteen. Go ahead. This wisdom have I seen also under the sun, and it seemeth great unto me. There was a little city, and few men within it. And there came a great king against it, and besieged it, and built great buildings, Bul built uh, bulwarks against it. Now there was found in it a poor wise man, and he by his wisdom delivered the city. Come on. Yet no man remembered that same poor man. Then said I, wisdom is better than strength. Nevertheless, the poor man's wisdom is despised, and his words are not heard. The words of wise men are heard in quite more than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. Wisdom is better than we weapons of war, for one sinner destroyeth much good. And that's some good stuff right there. I, I suggest y'all read that 13 through 18 again on your own, brothers and sisters. Because don't think just because you become get a little wisdom that, that means you're going to get an opportunity to share with everybody. That ain't what it said right here. It said the poor wise man, he was delivered a whole city, right? Mm -hmm. They say, what, what did it say there? He said, it said, the words of wise men are heard in what? Quiet, right? More than the cry of him that ruleth among fools. Because they always going to listen to the fool before the wise men, brothers and sisters. And that's, the Lord gives wisdom, and I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name. We're going to have regular Sabbath announcements. We welcome you and hope today's lesson increased your knowledge of the Holy Bible. We have question and answer every Wednesday at 5 p.m. via telephone conference line. The number and access codes are located at the top of the lesson. Or see the live stream of questions and answer at www.thykingdomcome7.com. If you are interested in being baptized, please place your name on the list at the literature table. Remember to follow the dress code when attending our services. Men should wear, remove all hats and all head coverings during service time. Women should wear a head covering, such as a hat or scarf, during the service. Women should not wear tight-fitting pants or skirts or revealing clothing. Attire should be modest according to the Bible. If your, if your child becomes restless during the Bible lesson, we encourage you to remove your child from the room until he or she has settled. Your tithes and offerings are always appreciated. Please place your tithes and offerings in an envelope, offering envelope, and deposit it into the offering box. Your cooperation is greatly appreciated. Again, thank you for coming, and we hope to see you on the next Sabbath. Peace. Peace. You know me. I'm always glad to come out here and be with y'all. Y'all family, you know. And my family, I pretty much just met. But then again, I don't know a few of y'all for a while now. But uh, I don't really got much to say. I'm sure you. Oh yeah, y'all got. Yeah, a little bit more. Go ahead. Our Sabbath lessons start at 12 p.m. noon, unless otherwise announced. Please refer to the group chat for the appropriate lesson start times or contact Sister Debbie. For the, uh, if anyone is willing and able to volunteer in helping with the pickup and drop off of our brothers from the airport, please contact me, Brother Hyman. We encourage everyone to check out and subscribe to our YouTube channel entitled Israel the Church of Jesus Oakland. Everyone is responsible for contributing to the Sabbath food spread. Please be sure to bring enough dishes, foods, etc. to share. Financial contributions are accepted. Lastly, let us remember to pray for one another. Peace and happy Sabbath. Hey, there it is at the bottom. That's yeah. all I was going to say. Well, we're like, now, you know.
I don't know, have y'all realized that, you know, you, you read that scriptures like it's saying in the Bible, like pray without ceasing, right? Mm -hmm. uh, what is, it's got some more scriptures about prayer, like just like, like God really put, uh, the one to me, it seemed like he put extras on it, because, you know, I'll be honest with you, man, I don't pray like I should, I mean, or like I want to, I don't know which one I want to say, but the more the rug goes in the direction it's going, boy, it kind of pushes you to, like, before you leave the house, do a little bit more praying and stuff like that. So that's all I'm saying, brothers and sisters. Amen. Yeah, it, we, we need to be praying. If, if, if you praying and you praying and then that it all, we praying without ceasing together, right? right? Maybe not individually we can't do it, but if throughout the day we all praying for one another, the most high, you know, we know we we in tune with them. That's all I got to say. We're going to have lunch and close out one thing. Our Father, which art in heaven. Our Father, which art in heaven. Holy be thy name. Holy, Holy be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Thy will be done. On earth. On earth. As it is in heaven. As it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us this day our daily bread. Give us our debts. Give us our debts. We forgive our debtors. As we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation. Lead us not into temptation. Deliver us from evil. Deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom. For thine is the kingdom. And the power. And the power. And the glory. And the glory. Forever. Forever. Praise God. Praise God. For he is good. For he, he is good. His mercy endures forever. And his mercy endures forever. These things we pray in Jesus' name. These things we pray in Jesus' name. The Holy One of Israel. The Holy One of Israel. The King of Kings. The King of Kings. And the Lord of Lords. The Lord of Lords. Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. 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 In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I thought you were sitting there praying like, like my grace for a minute. <laughs> <laughs> you was going fast, Hebrew. <laughs> you was fighting mercy. But you got it through there, bro. Yeah. All right, all right. Yeah, you got to know Jason, man. Lord, is my brother. Did you call me? Somebody called me. Did you call me? Somebody yeah, brother, what do you say? Well, I don't know. 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 I don't Sister Deb, you got an extra calendar? I think so. Hey, what are you at? They said you was coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good for you. Good to see you. What a lady. Yeah, I'm glad you came. Got some questions about that. Q&A or solo? You beat me. Oh, that means they did. Hey, you're going to say hi. Yeah. Lawrence. I'm going to read your last one. I They don't even know I'm getting paid for it. They don't know. Uh, no, this is all. But even in your day, yeah. And this is good ease.
Team in high school. Oh, I, uh, I went to school in San Jose. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I worked in Fremont. No. Fremont. Uh, Tesla. Mm -hmm. I was 